Welcome to the Traditional Bow Hunting Wilderness Podcast. Jason Sam Koviak. It is a windy day today, and uh, I am all loaded up. Everything is all set and headed to go to Kansas. I got to stop in uh, uh, Flint, Michigan, pick up John, where he's gonna. We're gonna take his, grab his boat, grab his gear, throw it in a truck, and we are heading out. But we have everything ready. Trailer all loaded with all my gear. My boat up on top. John's boat will go there as well too. And uh, we are all loaded, stocked, locked, and ready to rock dock, as uh, famous Ted Nugent would say. So we are set and ready, and heading out and going to uh, going out and gonna try uh, killing some deer in Kansas. So we'll keep you along for the trip. See how it does. can already hear deer running up there listen it's a buck running a doe right up there on a bank somewhere i can't see him but i can hear him listen buck running a doe Kansas. This is day one first uh first uh hunt. I got on stand about an hour and a half ago. <clears throat> it's already like I think it's 1.30, but had a uh had a rough way in here in Missouri, ended up having a deer run out across the road. I think a buck was chasing her. She was just hauling and I swerved and she didn't hit the truck, but she smashed into the trailer right at the wheel, bent the axle, ripped the fender off, busted up the side of the trailer. Um, so I got insurance claim on there because I don't think I can drive it home one wheel's like dog legged out real bad. Um, we limped it into here stopping every 10 miles and letting the tire cool down a little bit. And uh, So it was an adventure, but we got here late and slept for an hour, set camp up. And now we're in here and hunting. I just passed up a nine point that came right up through here. He was actually going through this way, but um, which is this is where I'm expecting all my action at. Um, right at the head of this, but... He came up through here, got over there, I um, bleeded at him and brought him back over, had him come in around that cedar, walk right up here and then swing right there and I passed him up right there, I could have killed him. And he was a decent nine point, definitely a shooter if it wasn't literally the first morning in. Um, so, I mean the first, you know, it's not morning, but my, you know, my first hour and a half of being in Kansas. So we're going to ride it out and see what happens. But, Hopefully I don't regret it. It was a nice nine point. You'll see video footage of them right here. So we are set up. We will see what happens.
Kansas this morning. I hunted exactly where I was last night where I showed you. And uh, where, you know, I had the, the two bucks and the doe come by. I hunted that again this morning. All I saw was one, one doe let her go. And uh, then I stayed there until 2 o'clock. Got down. It took me about an hour and a half to get over to this spot. I'm set up here. Only got a couple hours left of light. Um, and uh, so far all I've seen is two possums. I've been up here for about an hour. A little less than an hour. And uh, we'll see what happens here. But good area. I'd say a uh, real thick transition. You can see bedding there. Bedding up. This is all bedding. There's more bedding over there, and you can see how thick it is as it transitions through here. So it's a really good spot. This is real open over here. See how open this is even to that field? But that field is tall grass, two CRP grasses. For CRP, it's real thick and tall. That's bedding also, but too open in here. So when they want to send track all this stuff, I'm expecting it to happen right through here. So that's kind of why I'm set up. I was going to hunt this tonight and then hunt it again tomorrow morning and then move somewhere else late tomorrow afternoon but uh with the high winds that are coming in and the way this is set up i got a feeling it's just going to be too too much wind in here so i am going to pull out tonight out of here even though i just got in here but i'm going to hunt it for the rest of the night then i'm going to pull out and i'm going to go in blind to a different ridge um tomorrow that's going to work better for high wind so we shall see what happens but we got about, about two hours maybe about two two and a half hours left of daylight we'll see how it goes here so all right all right hey guys <clears throat> this is third day uh, third day in kansas and i'm in a spot here that uh, i've never been to before i'm hoping this works it's all theory based but what we have here i've been in stand for about an hour i got in here came in blind in the dark um picked a spot and set up in the dark and uh, what I have here we have this hillside we're on the side of the ridge tops right there see how open all this is now if you look down here see how you got this thick section here see how it's steep it comes into this bench this bench goes right here to where these cedars are and then it drops down hard again and you can actually see the river right through there that that bright white that's the river running through there so this bench that's real thick there's a lot of scrapes and rubs all over in the cedar line um this cedar right here is rubbed on the other side it's a fantastic little spot i got trails running everywhere through here and uh we got a point or like a, uh, a, a draw that comes down through there too that kind of funnels them so I'm expecting this travel to be on this real thick part all of this on this hillside now the part when I think this is going to get good is we have got 30 plus mile an hour winds coming today coming this way I am hoping that this hill is going to block that wind from hitting me and bothering me also, the deer will be over here to avoid that massive wind and have some protection from this hillside. So that is my intent today. I don't know. Not sure. John is in another spot about one and a half miles over that way. And he just texted me that he had a uh, solid eight point chasing a doe around. So at least we know they're up and moving. And uh, we are going to see what happens here. But that wind should start picking up in about an hour. And it's going to be a pretty crazy day. It's 2 o'clock. Still here. So far all I've seen has been uh, one deer that I don't know what it was. And uh, yeah, I seen it come, or I heard it come crashing and turned around. And then it turned around and took right back off. I don't know what it was. It was right over there behind that cedar. Right there. Came crushing, running in that way pretty fast. I heard it, I stopped, I looked, and then all of a sudden I see it just turn and drop right down. I seen the white tail run. I don't know. And then I had two does come by, walk right up by here that I let go by, but that's been it so far. And those were all pretty early. I haven't seen nothing in a few hours. I should have probably got down. We got a gap in the wind. The wind has been torrential, or it was just crazy windy. Uh, you could hear trees falling and the river breaking over. I mean, probably. 30, 40 big trees have gone down uh, today, so it's been pretty crazy, but I was going to move, 
And I got another spot in mind, but the wind is going to be the same tomorrow. High winds and same direction. So I think I'm going to save that place for tomorrow. Um, I'll go in there blind in the dark in the morning. Set up, figure it out like I did here. I think I'm going to sit this ridge. I can't believe that if bucks are cruising for does, that they're not going to come through here. And the way the thermals are working, I can't believe they won't be right here. I, there's just no reason not to. This trail here looks like a cruising trail to me you got three more trails there you got one that comes off of there you got one that runs right up here by that cedar you got another one that comes out there i got scrapes all over one two three scrapes right there huge rub on that cedar there huge rub on that cedar over there big rub on that cedar over there i mean this area is just prime there's no reason that they shouldn't be coming through here. So I got high hopes and expectations. I'm just gonna sit it for the rest of the day. It's only like, what, uh, four hours left of daylight. It'd be in two o'clock right now. You got about four hours. I'm gonna sit it out and uh, hit that other place tomorrow. So we'll see what happens. All right, we are still in that same spot here. We are down to the last hour. We got one hour left. The wind has calmed down in here <clears throat> and where I am. It got pretty quiet. You can still see all the trees moving on a ridge with that wind coming this way up there on the top. It's still blowing pretty hard, but it's pretty calm in here. Um, so far I have, with being here all day, I've seen one unknown deer, four does, and a coyote. And uh, that coyote came up to right here. I was actually on the phone. I had to be on the phone today with, they, they totaled my trailer out with their deer hitting it. Um, I've been on the phone for a total of about an hour time, spread over five different calls, but about an hour today has been spent right here on the phone because they're not open past five for any of these services and all that stuff. So I had to deal with all that. So I've been on the phone a lot today, right here on this tree stand, which may or may not have hurt me, but like I said, we've got four does, one unknown deer, and a coyote so far. An hour left. The wind is calming down where we are. Thermals are starting to drop again. And uh, it's getting to be game time. Hopefully, uh, 25 or 30 bucks decide to come right through here and start sun checking this, uh, this ridge. So we'll see what happens. Thursday and uh, we got tomorrow left but it is uh, today and tomorrow so it's Thursday and I came in here blind um, I'm in a total different area whole nother section that I've never ever even stepped foot in over here miles away from where we normally go but we got cedars here a high patch of cedars that's good bedding and I actually this is the feature I was looking for scrapes there scrapes there and there are scrapes there there are scrapes everywhere around here it's a kind of an overlooked place listen you'll hear the cars they're only about 350 yards uh maybe 400 yards from the from a road um but then so you got this flat up here cedars you got this bench that comes down right here creates this bench that i'm on right here and then you can see the hard drop it goes down into that bottom i mean this is pretty country you can see the river way over there um, but see how steep this wall is here and in here it kind of ramps a little more smoother of a transition and then it gets steep again here along that edge so knowing that i'm kind of hoping that this is a travel route and i do see the trails on there they're coming up and down in through there you got a couple good cuts right here where they're coming up through here through this rock ledge and uh then you have this whole feature of being this bench right here being major travel for anything that wants to send check this so that's kind of was my intention um the high winds are pretty brutal pretty brutal yesterday we had 50 mile an hour gusts and 30 mile an hour steady winds and about uh 3 a.m last night it started here as well too it started again with uh you know like right now it's today's 25 mile an hour winds and it's 70 something degrees it's supposed to be so it's brutal brutal temperatures 
brutal winds. We are set up so that that wind is coming straight at me. So all this protection keeps that wind at bay. And that's why I'm hoping to find that activity on this bench and over here. So we shall see what happens. Here we go. See that big dude walking right there. Look at the size of that big 11 point. See him down there shaking. He was just right here. He's a huge 11. I don't know if you can still see him. There he goes. Big 11 point. He was standing. He came right along the bench. Right here. Came right up and stood right behind this tree right here. He caught my wind. Backtracked over to that log and dropped down and then went that way. I couldn't call him back up here. Couldn't do nothing. Man, what a bummer. He was right there. If he'd have took a couple more steps, I'd have drilled him right there. What a bummer. But he did exactly like I thought. Coming straight down his bench. Okay. I had to relocate quickly. As you can see, you can still see where the sun is here. I mean, it's only... It's 8.20. And uh, but right after I got done filming that big 11 point that came through that bypassed me, he was right by that cedar. He came right there, stopped, and I went back by that log and dropped down. I was up in that oak right up there. And then uh, not not 10 minutes later, not a huge, probably 150 inch deer, I mean huge, bigger than 11 point, came through, hit that log right on this side. That log dropped right down, side hill right down through here, came through here. And uh, so that's both those deer that came right through here. So I hurry up and drop down from there, ran down here, relocated in about five minutes. And now we are set up for the rest of the day, hoping that some more deer do the same thing. But that's two massive bucks, two absolute monster bucks already. And we haven't been on stand for an hour. So hopefully, uh, hopefully this is the spot we see what happens. Of course, the trees I picked to climb up, I saw it when I was climbing and just said, forget it, what are you going to do? But poison ivy, I'm 90% sure that this is poison ivy coming off that vine with the berries on it. It's all over. This is poison ivy I'm leaning on. Uh, you can see it here on this tree, too. See the poison ivy berries coming right in. That's all poison ivy all over this whole tree I'm on. So, I guess it is, uh, you know, just try to be careful, I guess, but what am I going to do? This is where I need to be, so I'm dealing with a poison ivy. You know, just sitting here thinking, I can't believe that. You know, I spent three days hunt, hunting these places that are so remote here, where it's literally, it's 800 yards from where I parked the truck, 800 yard walk down to the river. I get in the river. I paddle for three quarters of a mile. I fight my way up 10 foot banks that are undercut and miserable. And then I hike another 300, 300 yards into the woods, set up a stand and hunt to see four does. And that's all I saw in a 12 hour set. I come here, I can park my truck. I walk in 300 yards on the top of a ridge. So I don't even have to go up or down nothing set up and I see two of the biggest bucks I've, I've seen ever come right by within 10 minutes of each other on a, in the first hour of daylight. It's like, man, you know, it just goes to show you sometimes overlooked places are the best places. But, I mean, this was so easy to get into compared to what I've been hunting for three days. I'm going to tear this place apart in here. Um, over the next, uh, you know, I got today and tomorrow basically. I'm going to sit here all day see what happens and then uh, if nothing happens I'm gonna hit the same area but move maybe a couple hundred yards tomorrow figure something out but it just blows my mind how how that works you know sometimes you know right underneath your nose is some of the best options all right we are on the last day today is Friday this is the last day that I get to hunt uh, due to the fact of that, that trailer getting totaled by the deer us being able to get a U-Haul and John being able to get a ride to pick him up when we get uh, closer to home. Today is officially our last day to hunt. We're going to hunt all day and get ready to roll out first thing in the morning, if not late tonight. I am back in the same area that I spent all day yesterday in. 
Yesterday was one of the best days I've ever had in the woods, ever, before. I mean, it was absolutely incredible. Um, we'll talk about that after today when I get out of the woods, so stick around for that because you're going to want to hear it. I'll show you some videos, some pictures, that kind of stuff. But yesterday was by far one of the best days I've ever had in the woods before, ever, anywhere. And uh, I am back in that same kind of area right now when I was here yesterday. Yesterday morning, I started out up there, somewhere up, right up in there. Then I had those two bucks come by and I dropped down. And I ended up in that, that oak over there. And then a ton of great stuff happened yesterday. And now I'm actually over here. I am only two sticks high. I wanted to go higher and I can shoot this side fine. I wish I was higher, but the problem is... And if I go any higher, I lose all my shooting through this stuff and all this stuff. So I'm kind of stuck at the height I'm at here. But I am in the exact spot I want to be at. And I am excited. Look at what we have right here. Look at... We got a scrape there. Got another scrape right there. Both fresh scrapes. Look at the rubs on both that tree and the one behind it. Right there, just freshly shredded. Um, you can see the fur on the back side of that other one there. See the fur on there. This place is just wrecked. Like I said, one of the best days I've ever had in the woods was in here. So I'm very excited uh, to be spending the last day here. Now the wind is doing the exact opposite. Prefer the wind to be on the leeward side. But right now I'm on the windward side because the wind switched around. But... We shall see what happens, and uh, I'm excited, and we'll touch back later. All right, so we got a major dilemma here I'm trying to solve. I'm just not feeling it here right now. Granted, yesterday was the best day I've ever had in the woods, but the wind yesterday was going that way. That hill behind me was all batting cedars with a leap. We're on the leeward side with the wind going this way, so I would expect it all this to be hit. Now that wind is coming this way, and actually it's, so it's coming towards me this way going into that hill, but it's also kicking a lot this way. That point is there, right there's that point. Most of the deer came through here, through this bottom here, or around this point here, or over there. But there is, what I'm thinking is bedding 350 yards over there on that hillside, would be leeward side. And I'm half tempted to just drop down, hike in, and drop and cross that. I'll go all the way down to the bottom of this, see if I can get across that washer creek that's there. And shoot up on that side is what I'm thinking about doing. Um, I'm not sure. I'm just I'm not trusting the wind. Like I said, I'm just not trusting the wind. I'm not trusting the fact that I sat in here all day yesterday and may or may not have burned stuff out. Not trusting the fact that I, uh, just not, not feeling it. Just not sure. Um, granted, by this time yesterday, I only saw three bucks. Three out of ten bucks yesterday by this time. But like I said, the way the wind is, and the fact that if they want to send check those cedars up above me or where that bedding area is, they have to go on the other side of it. They won't be on this side to do it. It's not efficient. Um... God, I don't know what to do. Do I leave, like I said, a place that's been the best spot I've ever sat in my whole deer hunting career as far as, you know, 10 shooter bucks came through here. 10 shooter bucks. I've never experienced that before. And we are talking massive bucks. And I got pictures of a video on, like I said, I'll show you some of that later. But oh, I don't know what to do. Do I stay here? Or do I drop down and make the hike and head over there? And then if I don't like what I'm seeing over there and I'm not happy, just sit it for a little while. And then later on when the thermals are coming and those thermals kick in tonight and those thermals are dropping hard off of this ridge, you know those deer might be back over here using the thermals to scent check that. So do I run over there 350 yards or so, set up, stay if I like it, if I don't, you know, for the last hour and a half of nighttime, drop down, come back over here and reset up here. 
I think I'm going to give it 15 minutes. It is. It's quarter after 11. I'm going to give it till 11.30. And then I'm going to make my decision. And I'm probably going to drop down, head over there, set up over there for any midday cruisers that are sent checking in. And if I'm not happy and I don't like it, then I'll drop down at like 4.30 and swing my butt back over here and climb right back up where I am right now. I think that's my game plan. We'll see what happens here. Thanks for helping me solve it. All right. I just got set up. It's exactly noon. I waited till 11.30, got down. Instead of going across and doing that for fear of me blowing out that area if I want to go back to it tonight. I, instead, I chose to come up into the cedars that were above me and come into here. So I'm at the start of these cedars here where it gets thick. This is how they're going to access this coming in off that ridge. I was over there down that way is where my stand was that I was at earlier. I am now on the back side of this. We got this hillside wind going that way, but there's rub lines coming up. There's a real good scrape right there. Let's see if I can show you there, but we got a good scrape right there. Rubs coming up into here. We have scrapes here, here, and here. We have a real good scrape right there. We have another real good scrape right there under that tree. There's another good scrape right down this little chute. And there's two more scrapes right down this little chute. You can see barely here, but this is a, like a, a little path that goes through these thick cedars that I'm assuming all these these eight scrapes that are here and all these rubs are because this is the pathway they're taking through the cedars. So I'm assuming that that's going to work when coming in our direction this way. And uh, we're going to sit here till about probably 4.30. I am in a very teeny tiny Osage tree. I mean barely hanging on here. I mean you can see this thing rocking. I mean it's teeny tiny and uh, but it is doing a trick and I'm backed right into the cedar here. So we are pretty good. I got great shooting in here for being in super tight cedars like I am. This one little particular spot gives me a lot of shooting in here. So I'm pretty pumped about that. I'm pretty excited that I can cover so much ground while being jammed into these heaters. So we're going to see what happens. All right, this is the last evening. I am back down here. <clears throat> I'm about 100 yards from where I was this morning, but this is my third stand move today. You know, I pulled that stand last night and left it at the base of a tree came out of here came back in this morning grabbed that stand walked to where i wanted to go hung that stand realized the wind was not cooperating with what i wanted it to do sat there for a while hoping for the best and then realized i had to bail bailed went up high into the cedars up there sat there for three hours didn't see nothing and uh but i wanted to give this a chance to let the thermals the sunset and the thermals to start bringing it back down open and deer will then start filtering through here to scent check so i just moved back down here about a half hour ago i am set up and uh we will see what happens but pretty pretty crazy to have you know 10 shooter bucks and um eight or nine does through here yesterday and today have not seen one simple deer it does reinforce this theory why i say i do not hunt the same place twice um you know without giving it a few weeks i mean yesterday i don't think anybody had ever been in here before i come in here yesterday absolutely rocking amazing day but my scent was in two different trees yesterday you know i hunted two different trees and uh you know so i mean my, my scent was in here all day yesterday and then even though i leave any deer come through here tonight my scent is still there and uh, so it makes a big difference. That may be what killed this. This is why I don't hunt the same place twice, you know, two days in a row. But with how good this was, I thought I'm um, going to make an exception. Maybe maybe that was a bad move. Um, but we'll see. We got, uh, what time is it? It is quarter to five. So we got an hour, basically. Uh, yeah, we got about an hour left, so we'll see what happens here. But sun's gone, thermals are starting to drop down. Hopefully, we get some cruisers coming through here, sun tracking and stuff. So, all right, we'll see what happens. We got a doe right there. She's walking right there. You can see her. And we got another one coming right over there. Maybe our luck's about to change. Maybe those toes will bring in a set of horns here on the way. There's the big 
until she walked by me just out of range. Just couldn't. I mean, she was five yards too far out of shot her. She passed just on the other side of that pine tree that you're seeing right there. Just a hair out of there. And when I got to a shooting hole, she was just a little too far, which would have been right in there. So, she's over there. That's three does. Maybe we got a little light left. Maybe it'll bring a buck in here. <coughs> Alright, so we're back now. Everything's all done. Back from the hunt. Just getting everything undone. I got the trailer emptied. Uh, U-Haul trailer that we had to use to get home because our trailer was totaled. Um, getting a new trailer hopefully this week. Once I find out how much they're giving me for that one, I'll use that plus some extra and go get a new trailer. But... Got to pull the boat down, um, but the um, that day I told you I'd tell you a little bit more about it. So uh, that day, whatever that was Thursday, I went into that spot. I set up in there. I showed you all that kind of stuff. But I had those two monsters come by me. One of them was just uh, we. I, I nicknamed him that morning as I was for purposes of text messages with John. But I called him Rib Cage because his head looked like a rib cage every time. Was like fourteen inches, sixteen inches long. It was just insane. Um, but, uh, he came through, like I said, and then I realized I moved. I explained all that to you in there. Well, then later that day I had saw, um, another big buck come through, uh, at like 1130. Um, and then, uh, not give me a shot, came right to me, but a doe up on the, up by the cedars, grabbed your attention, pulled her right up there to that doe. Um, so he came in and like I said, he was like, I don't know, maybe 22, 23 yards facing me. And then he was looking up at her, looking up at her. And then she went down along that point and came down. He turned straight around and walked right up to her and then ran her up there. So I didn't see him anymore. Then I had a decent eight point that I, again, I would have shot definitely a shooter come through down through that bottom, work his way up there. And then he stopped and I think he bedded down over there because I didn't see him anymore. And then I never seen him again the rest of the day, but I like, he came in and then I just lost him and he was gone. And so that was like four, I think that's four bucks that I had seen that morning, three does, four bucks. And it's only like one o'clock in the afternoon, uh, at two o'clock I had another buck come through there. that was just out of range. Wasn't an option. A uh, decent one. I didn't get to see how big he was because he was carrying a mail, just, you know, moving through real quick. Um, and then, uh, it quieted down for a little while. Then that evening. I had that ribcage one come by me too. He came by me. I had moved stands twice now. I'm down lower in there. You saw that in the video. He comes by and he's walking by and I'm guessing him at 25 yards, somewhere between 25 and 30 yards, but he's way down that hill. So it's like 50 feet of elevation change to where he is. But uh, so I didn't feel comfortable when he came through. I tried to stop a couple times. He didn't care. He wouldn't stop. He came through. I drew on him four times as he would he'd stop behind some stuff. I'm like, oh, if he steps out, maybe he'd step out. I draw. I just uh, I could four times I drew, but could not get myself to let that string go. I just was not comfortable with the distance. I did not have the confidence with that angle being so far down. So it, everything just played weird in my mind. It just, I couldn't trigger to let the, the string go. I didn't feel comfortable with it. So he walked out of my life and gone for good. Never seen him again after that. And that was twice in one day, but never seen him again after that. Um, and then, uh, then the other, and that, that other big one, it was there this morning, that morning, he also came back along that ridge. He was walking up and I'm like, Oh, he's going to come right to me. He's coming up here. No, I'm like, okay, is he go he's walking to me, but he's zigzagging up here and he's scent checking that cedars up there. I'm standing here. I'm like, which way is he going to go? Is he going this side or is he going this side? Which, which way, what's going to happen here? What's he going to do? And, uh, so I waited for him, waited for him. Finally, he gets closer, closer and he cuts up the bank. So I'm like, okay. So I turned this way. He starts to walk up the bank. And he turns around. I don't even know if you guys can see me in there. Let me look at that just to see angle-wise here. Can you? Yeah. Um, but uh, so he walks up that bank. He turns and goes up behind me. Now, I can't shoot right. I'm facing this way. So I cannot shoot that way just because of the way, way this tree is. It's a little tricky here. Uh, the way it came up and how my stand was leaning, I, I just couldn't shoot there. So he comes up behind me and cuts up this way. I'm like, all right. And then he's there. And then he starts to come down. I'm thinking, okay, he's going to come down to me. He's going to come right in front of me here. So now I'm turning on the stand this way. I'm waiting for him, waiting for him. Come on. He, he's only like eight yards away from me, but he's he's facing to me. I'm expecting him to come down this hill right here and give me a shot right here. I'm like, come on, come on. He stops. He turns right here, and he comes right under me. I'm like, oh, man. And so now he's going to come out on this side. And I'll brush down there. I turn back around this way, trying not to get his attention. He stops for a second. Might have been stuff coming off my shoes. 
he's trying to figure things out. I'm like going, okay, okay. And then he starts to walk. He's walking straight away from me. I'm like, no. And I bleed one. And he stopped, looked over his shoulder, back up the hill, turns, starts to walk back up the hill towards me. He's right here the whole time. He's right here. He's walking back. Now he's facing straight at me. I'm standing right here watching. We come straight up. He stands right below me, turns sideways this way, starts to walk straight away from me this way. I'm going, oh my gosh, you know, what are you going to do? And, um, and then uh, get a bleat from up or up on a thing. There's a bleat that happens up there and it grabs his attention. He turns. I spin around like this. He starts and he starts moving a little quicker. He's not running, but he starts really trotting up there. And he wouldn't stop. But and then I'm like, there it is. And I shot and deflection. I hit a stick. We had a shot at like 17 yards. And there's a stick there that I didn't see. But I watched my arrow go pink and drop right into the ground three feet in front of him. It goes whoop, boop, dropped right in and stuck in the ground. Hit a branch. It was there. Something was there. But uh, but anyway, so he walks off and gone. And so I never never found a opportunity at him again. I never had another chance. So he was gone. Then I got two bucks fighting, which I'm gonna play audio here for you. right at dark i got two bucks over here that are fighting you can hear i can see them through my binoculars you get audio of it but they're crashing smashing into each other both of those deer end up coming you'll see me quickly i like drop the camera fast because they're coming i can hear them they're coming it's getting dark down to last light both of those bucks come in they're chasing each other around running around down here like this and they're all over under me but now it's i can't see where all these branches are and there's so much underbrush so much new growth osage in here that I, I'm losing my pockets and my windows to shoot at really, really fast. And I'm not quite sure. And there's, like I said, a lot of understory there. But they're milling around all over in here, running back and forth, running up the hill, coming back down, and all this kind of stuff. I mean, I drew like another two times, I, I, but I just could not find the windows on them. I could not find a spot with it getting that dark to be able to take a shot. So ended up being that was it that was the rest of the night you know i mean it was one of the best days i've had on stand 10 times and again probably some of them repeat like the two for the morning but 10 times shooter bucks had come by me within 25 yards of me that day and a good solid eight nine does that i had up there that were running back and forth and i wasn't going to kill a doe with it being that uh you know with all this buck activity and have to spend all that time packing it out so uh, it was a fantastic trip. It was an amazing trip. One of the best days I had in the woods was one of the biggest deer I've ever encountered. So I was incredibly happy, and I was thrilled with the way it went. Um, and then I went back in there the next day, and you saw that. The only thing that happened that next day that I was in there, the wind had changed. With that wind changing, uh, my advice, I thought, you know what, it's been so hot, they're probably still going to be there. So I stayed and tried it. Um, but with that wind change, it just killed that whole thing. It was dead. I mean, I bounced around three times that day in there. The only deer I saw where I had three does walk by me. Um, the biggest doe passed by me. Like she was probably, I'm going to say 17, 18 yards. Um, she was sniffing around an oak tree that I was at. I was picking a tree. Um, I picked a tree. I'm like, I want this one. Ah, but I don't have good shooting over there. So I backtracked over to the Osage that I climbed up in. And while she came down that hill and she stopped at that oak tree and was checking my scent where I was all around it, I, I could have killed her a bunch of times. And I thought, nah, I'm going to wait. Like I said, I only got a half hour, hour left of, of daylight. I don't know what's, you know, there could be a buck coming. So I let her walk. I, I let her go. And then, uh, then the other ones came by and I thought, well, maybe if they sneak over here, maybe I'll shoot them. I, I was hemming and hawing. And I did. I chose not to shoot them, hoping on a buck to come through there. No bucks came through. That ended uh the you know the trip to uh to kansas so i didn't kill a deer i think i passed i want to say i passed 11 bucks that i could have shot that i would have shot including that nine point you saw on the first day tw 20 minutes in stand in kansas and i had that beautiful nine probably pushing 110 100 100 100 to 110 inch deer i'd have killed it all day long if it had been anything other than the first 20 minutes of deer hunting um, there, but I let that one walk a few other bucks. I let probably seven, eight, nine does walk by all in range. It was a fantastic trip, 
But I came home empty-handed by choice. But uh, like I said, that day, that Friday, will never be forgotten. That day was absolutely amazing. So, all right, thanks for watching, guys. And uh, I'll, like I said, somewhere in here, I'm showing you some of these pictures and video of that kind of stuff in there. So hope you enjoyed this vlog and coming along with me. I got to get this boat untied, get this thing off of here, and then uh, two weeks, and it's time for Oklahoma. We'll see what happens there. Never been there before, never hunted it, so we'll see. So, all right, thanks for watching. Bye.